Media is a means of communication that reaches or influences people widely. Television, radio, newspapers, and magazines are all forms of media. Everyone is influenced by what they see, hear, or read. Over the years, the media has influenced us in a negative way. The media wants women to become something they are not. Women's rates of depression have rose over the last few years due to the fact that they don't feel comfortable on how they look. Nowadays, women care more on the opinions of others than being themselves. Kids under the age of six watch an average of two hours of screen media a day, primarily TV and videos. Kids and teens between the ages of eight and 18 spend nearly four hours a day in front of a TV screen and almost an additional two hours on the computer playing video games. The television that we watch is like little children, whether it's like Princesses, Dora, or like, I don't know, everything that's on Disney, like, or Nickelodeon, like all that stuff is just things that are like negatively affecting us when we like don't even know it. We're like five and we're watching like Princesses and like Princes saving them. <laughs> yeah. picture it was like closed legs when the box was closed and then when he showed the ring open that the legs are open so it's like you know in the society a woman will give you if you give her it means yeah. I think it's suggesting that um, it could be seen as two different things maybe one is that men pay for sex I mean not in a prostitution type of way but like that they that they give gifts and that they uh, try to um, use material things to get the sex that they want. But the other way you could look at it is that the woman is offering the sex for the material good. You could you could look at it both ways. I usually I think I would I would say the first one in my own mind like that this is a male um, like in other words that that it's the male sort of bribing her for sex. But that's because I think I'm like I'm trained to think that way because of everything I see in movies and on TV. The first place my eyes went to in this ad was the sold sign um, that the mannequin is holding. To me, it just sends the message that she's something to be bought and that she's something that is um, maybe not human, like an object, and really the second thing my eyes sort of are drawn to is um, this man almost kneeling in front of her. And it's interesting to me because their sizes are so different. He seems more human, more real, and she becomes almost like this alien, unknown thing that hovers above him. And it seems that she has some sort of power over him because he's, he's on his knees almost in worship of her. Um, and I guess the question I'm asking is, what is making him worship her? And Maybe what does he want from her? That's really what I'm thinking about. The first place my eyes focused on was the woman's neck, how he was um, choking her as if he was like killing her with murder. Um, why? Why? Because it just showed that the man, like, a, a like if it, as if a typical man was supposed to have that much power. I mean, why isn't it the woman choking the man? It's just his way of showing power in a negative way. This advertisement, the first place my eyes focused on was on kind of like the tie wrapped around the girl's neck and the fact that she's like laying somewhere in her underwear and the guy's face was like... So the focus first on the leash. The leash. Why? Uh, I feel like, well first of all it's right in the middle of the picture and it's wrapped around her neck. And, you know, like, it looks like he's 
saying like she's a dog and she like is objectifying women. For me, the, the biggest sort of um, piece of cultural uh, media that affected me, I think, was, was Barbie. When I first came to America, um, I had never seen, seen this ideal of, of tan skin and blonde hair, and I was instantly aware of, of how I'd not possess those things, and that I couldn't possess those things. Um, and then when I was in high school, I started tanning, and really damaged my skin because I have really light skin. I, I can't tan. I don't tan. I freckle. And, and I kept doing it for, for years until I, I realized that, you know, I'm just going to have to accept that this is what I look like. And maybe it's not so, so as a kid, I was probably being bullied. Like, I was bullied for being athletic because everyone took this week in and fragile. And, like, they were, they were just supposed to be, like, people were supposed to take care of you rather than take care of yourself. So for being athletic, I was picked on. And then once athletic women became popular, it was because I'm bigger. And I think that's a really big problem because when you're an athlete, you're bound to get bigger than most people. It wasn't until, you know, the 19, 1920, 1919, when women were able to vote, so that they've been playing catch-up, um, and there's still this stigma, stereotype about women being in these leadership roles and the, the, being in these positions of, of power and, and as being not feminine and reserved only for men. So I think, you know, battling the stereotypes, the, the, the stigma, that comes with being in those power roles, coupled with you know laws preventing women from holding office for such a long time, has kept them from holding office. But there's that quote I think behind every great man, there's an even greater um, woman, or yeah. something along those lines that um, we forget when we're talking about the founding fathers or these great men that established our country that they went home and spoke to their wives and. and most of those, in, in most cases, women, those women, those wives, told the men like, "Oh, you should do this. Don't forget about that." And then they went to the meeting and got credit for these ideas. When a lot of it came from the support um, and strength from their, from the, the women in their lives. A positive role model in the media for me lately because of the elections of things of that sort has been Michelle Obama because I feel like she's a strong woman and even though she's the first lady, which means she's kind of like second to the president, she hasn't really acted as a second, you know. She's taken her stand and she believes in certain things and that those are things that she fights for as a president's wife. Um, but we don't refer to her as that, we refer to her as Michelle Obama because she's like that important in our lives and she also gives, a, gives off the aura of confidence and this idea that no matter what kind of person you are, um, you should be confident in who you are and what you're going to be like in the future. How do you want it? You gonna back that thing up or should I push up on it? Temperature rising, okay, let's go to the next level. Dance floor jam pack, hot as a tea kettle. I'll break it down for you now, baby, it's simple. If you be an info, I'll be an info. In the hotel or in the back of the rental on the beach and in the park, it's whatever. Women even today are objectified and seen as you know sex objects as, as opportunities for large companies, corporations to make money um, by using the female body as, a, as an advertising tool. Um, so a big executive is thinking, how do I sell my product? And they think, well, I could make a sexy woman part of the plan, and then women want to be that sexy. Men want to have sex with them. It's going to sell the product. Well, in like, say, TV dramas and like cartoons and all this stuff, women are like sexualized and they're thought to be like something to have, something to possess, something to take advantage of. Someone who's like calm and kind and always sexy and always 
just trying to please their man. What? For the longest time, I've sort of noticed that women um, appear to be wearing less and less in advertisements. Um, and they're also being portrayed in very um, unchanging sort of ways, that women have been, are being portrayed in this one sort of stereotype of being thin, of being beautiful, um, of being maybe maternal, um, or a vixen. It, it seems that she's always sort of locked into this role that um, she, can't, she can't explore other identities of herself, that she can only be this one thing, you know, she can only be a vixen, or um, she can only be a mother. Whereas in real life, women are, are, are layered and, and much more complex than that. Women are just as responsible as women as for the men. Because women are portrayed like that. Women are portrayed like that and then men see that they're portrayed like that and that's what they want. That's how they think women are supposed to be and that's how they portray them. And it's just a circle that keeps going on of how they're portrayed. Um, it seems to me that men, and not all men, but maybe some men, and especially young boys who are really impressionable at a young age, feed on these images and concoct these unreal and, and distorted visions of what a woman is. It seems that she can only be this one thing. She can only be a sex object or a mother, that she can't explore other roles, and, and that's how boys see, start to see that. Women. My little brother, he's like 10, he just watches stuff and he's like, oh, I'm going to be big and buff, I'm going to go to the gym, like, probably become buff or whatever, just to be pleased by others, like, not that it'll really, like, it's not as if it was, like, something he would want to do on his own. Like, it wasn't his choice? Right. Why is not the people call me names? Is I just want me to be game? My stress over people's thoughts Cause I know that I got my flaws But I'ma still stay strong Cause I know that I belong I don't need a hero I can be just mine Don't call me a zero Cause I won't never be fine I really don't care anymore Say whatever you wanna say Just don't go calling my name After hurting me so bad all I want you to know is that I'm an independent woman. I've been like a fool for thinking I was troubling you. So I'm gonna go on my own, cause I don't need you anymore. I didn't need you before.